the symptoms that children can get are things like pain, blood and urine, fever. Sometimes they have problems passing urine. The urine may not come or they can get obstruction or they can be intermittent. The urine comes and goes, comes and goes. As they are trying to pass urine, it stops and starts. And sometimes they can't pass urine at all. And other times there can be bladder overactivity or bladder irritation where the child will need to go to the toilet every few minutes. So the urinary tract comprises of the kidney, the ureters, which, is, which are the urinary tubes that lead from the kidney down to the bladder, the bladder itself, and the urethra, which is the tube that leads from the bladder out to the exterior. Now you can have different kinds of problems both in children and in adults. So whenever the symptoms are quite significant as in they are going to the toilet regularly or they are having severe pain or associated fever, it is best to take your child to your local doctor who will then assess and possibly do some urinary tests to check whether there is an infection and if required refer the child on to a pediatric urologist pediatric surgeon. So the commonest condition that we need to identify and to prevent is urinary tract infection and constipation whereby the bowel can push onto the bladder causing obstruction or bladder irritability whereby the child will have to run to the toilet regularly. And the other if there is obstruction to the urinary tract the child may not be able to pass urine efficiently or the urine flow might be intermittent. So both these situations is best to be seen by a pediatric surgeon. So the other symptoms related to abnormality of the urinary tract such as hydronephrosis where there is dilatation of the kidney, the stagnancy of urine in the kidney or the urinary tract or if there's any issues with the bladder itself. So those may be related to something that the child has been born with that is they are congenital and some of these conditions can be identified antenatally on the antenatal scans and subsequently the child needs to be followed up by a pediatric surgeon regularly so that there is no symptoms. If there is any risk to the kidneys getting infected or risk of further loss of function of the kidney, the surgeon will have to interfere early. By far the commonest condition that require a surgical intervention is something that the child is born with, either a blockage of the urinary system, the commonest would be the pelvic uteric junction obstruction where the kidney has a pelvis which is like a funnel that leads onto the ureter. So between the pelvis and the ureter there is an obstruction there, therefore it's called a pelvic uteric junction obstruction which requires surgery to deobstruct the, the urinary flow. Other conditions such as vesicoureteric reflux where the urine from the bladder doesn't only come out into the exterior when they pass urine, the urine also refluxes or goes backwards towards the kidney which may cause problems or risk of infection in these children. So we need to avoid any risk to further damage to the kidneys. The ones that are shown to have problems or have got risk of detrimental functional loss to the kidney are the ones that we require to do surgery such as a pyeloplasty for a PUG obstruction or I often use a deflux injection or injection to the junction between the ureter and the bladder for children who've got this thing called a vesicoureteric reflux. When a child has fever with pain or any urinary, urinary symptoms, it's important for the parents to take your child to the doctor. Firstly, to take a urine sample, to check and confirm whether there is a urinary tract infection. Any other symptoms as well that's related to the urinary tract system, you can firstly see a GP who will, will diagnose and refer to the pediatric surgeon. And the ones that are antenatally diagnosed, it's best to see the pediatric surgeon early on in their life so that early intervention can be taken if required.